Hello everyone, my name is Michael and welcome back to episode 2 of this Selenium tutorial series. In this episode, I will show you how you can go to this Amazon.com page and grab each product information of that page. So here we have about 20 products or so and what we will do is get each product and then for each product get the image URL the title, the price, and maybe the URL for that product. So yeah, let's go ahead and see how we can do that. First of all, I'll copy this URL, go back to my code and paste it here. So instead of the selenium.dev website we tried to visit before, we'll now visit Amazon. Next, let's go back to the website, right click and click inspect. And basically here we can see the HTML code for this website. Now we want to click up here and basically what that does is when we hover over an element it shows us the code for that element and now we want to find the selector for each product which is basically how we can find elements from our code. We can use for example a class name that all the products has and then using that class name we can tell the code to find all the elements matching that class name. Now what we want to do is get first of all the element surrounding all those products and all we have to do is scroll up and as you see the element that contains those divs are again a div and it has some class names. Now what we can do is right click on that element, go to copy and then we can either copy full xpath or selector or anything like that. So let's copy the selector. Let's go back in our code and now what we can do is say lm-list equal to browser. So first of all we want to find that element and we will paste our CSS selector. And actually we don't have to paste all that, just the main ones. There we go. Now let's then print lm list. Actually, let's print, yeah, let's print lm list and see if we get anything. So let's find the code and we get an error. And it says find elements by are depreciated. Actually, it's it's depreciated, but that doesn't mean we cannot use it. But let's update our method. So to use it normally, we can do find an element, and then we can use by, and then specify how we want to find that element, and we can say by the CSS selector, and then we can specify the CSS selector. Now let's rerun our program or application, and there we go. It console the log our element. Now we cannot see much from that. Now what we want to do is get the items and that will be equal to lm the list find elements by CSS selector and then we will specify the selector for that product. So if we go back, so let's close these browsers, let's go back and see which selector is the same for each product. And as you see, the data component type is always the same. It's always s does search does result for each product. So let's copy that selector. So let's say xpath. And what we will do is dash dash, and then the selector we used, but that will be in an array and also use single strings. So that way we can use double strings inside of that single string. And then let's print the length of that of those items so we can make sure it worked. Okay, so it says unable to locate an element with the xpath. So let's see how we can fix that. And there we go. All I had to do to fix the issue is add the div in front of it and also the add on data component type. And there we go. As you see, the length of the products are 24. And if we go back to the Amazon page, if we count them up are four and then one, two, three, four, five, six. And six multiplied by four is 24. There we go. So now we get all products. And now what we can do is use a for loop and then we can say for item in items print the text for that item. Now I'm not sure if that will work so let's test it out. So let's delete that and let's run an application and there we go. So what it does is it goes through each element so through each item and then it prints out the text. Now we don't want to print the text but what we can do again is use each item selector and then get the text. So to do that, let's find which selector is used for the title. So let's hover over 
our product title and then as you see we can use the h2 tag to find the title so let's go ahead and do that so we can say title equals to item dot find underscore element and then we can say buy and then the tag name and then we can use the h2 now what we can do is print the title and let's say title like that so let's run our application and there we go we got each title for each product so title pandweight title pandweight and there we go now let's get all the other elements we wanted so let's get the price and now we follow the same process we hover over the element that contains the price and as you see to do that all we have to do is get the class a dash price and then get the child element with a class a dash off screen or we can just get the first span element so let's go ahead and do that so we can say actually let's leave it as it is and then let's say price equals to item dot underscore element we can use the class name then let's go back as you can see it says a dash price so let's do that and then we can use the arrow and then pointing to span so what that says is gets get all the span elements so what that does is it says find that class name and actually do we have to put a dot in front of it i'm not sure let's actually we think i think that can work there we go and then we say actually we have to do css selector not class name and then what we are doing here is we say find that class name and then find that span inside that class name and what it does is it finds the first spawn and the first spawn is the one that it contains the price there we go so now let's again print the price using the same way and let's run our application again and we got an error okay so what's the error about okay most likely some elements don't have a price that's one reason that could happen as you see it says enable to locate element but the products that it got the price it still didn't got anything so we are doing something wrong let me remove the spawn and let's test it again but first of all we will put a try catch because not all divs contain a price so what we can do is leave it as like that put that below the try catch and then leave the price empty so let's say no price found and what we can do is try to find the price if we don't find anything we do nothing and that's basically it so by default the price says no price found then we try to find the price by the class name of that element and we get the text but if we get an error then we just do nothing so the application doesn't crash now let's test it again now we could do the same for the title but basically all products have a title so we don't have that issue and as you see we got the price so the price is equal to six dollars sixteen dollars etc etc now we also get got something else from that and we get the 99 and that's probably the sense okay so actually what i end up doing is using xpath actually all we have to do is once we get the text remove the spacing okay so what we can do is replace the text and then replace all the new lines that's what that represents that symbol then the new lines replace them with a dot because the new line represents the sense so that's why we put a dot now let's run our application and as you will see there we go we get the price which is 21.79 so that's interesting why do we get the same price for everything okay let's not use the xpath and instead use the css selector again so let's do that and let's try it again and there we go now we get the normal prices so 21.79 for raising electronics and now we go if we go back 21.79 then 899 and yeah that's true so yeah there we go now we can get the price now all it's left is the image and then the link to that product so let's inspect again hover over the image and there we go to find it we have to use the class that says s dash image so let's use that and again i'll do the same thing with the price use a try catch so we'll say try actually first let me it's that so let's say image equal to no image found and then i'll create a new try catch try to find the image and then we say dot get attribute source so we want to get the attribute called source from that selector from that element and then let's 
bring that to the console. So now let's rerun our application and there we go. So let's see if that's correct, if we get the correct image. So for Rising Electronics, if you see, we have this one right here. Now, if I click at the image, there we go, it gets the correct image. And let's get the second product image, which is the new X7. And the image is that, and if we check, there we go. So we do get the correct image URL. Now, let's go ahead and get the product URL as well. So let's rerun our application, let's inspect element, then let's hover over the product. And let's try to locate where that URL is. So let's scroll up. And first of all, we want to go to that product div. There we go. And let's try to locate the URL. It's probably on the image. So let's hover over the image. And yes, there we go. So if you see right here, the class with a dash link dash normal has the href to that product. So again, the same thing with the image, but now we don't have to put a try catch because all the products have a link to their product. So let's say link equal to and then we'll say item dot find underscore element. And actually we don't have to find, we don't want to find the A, just the class. So let's find it by the class because there could be multiple A tag elements. So let's use the CSS selector. Let's give it the class name. Actually we can use the class name. So let's use that instead. And then let's print our link with our link. And then let's rerun our application. Actually, let's add one more thing. But as you see, we do get the correct product URL. There we go. Now let's add one more thing because as you see right here, we get each product, but it's really confusing. So what I want to do is for each product, separate that with a new line. So we basically add a new line and then let's rerun our application. And there we go. Now it's more clear which title, price, image and link is for each product. Now, in the next video, I'll show you how you can go through pagination and get all the products from a category with from all pages. And then maybe on the next video, we'll go through how you can download those images from those links and anything else that you can do. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, let me know down in the comments what you'd like to see next. And also hit that like button, subscribe and hit that bell notification so you don't miss any of my future episodes. So with that said, see you in the next episode. Bye bye.